Well, I'm, I'm excited to hear from you today. Um, and it's, it's so fun to get to listen to um, a variety of people's thoughts and perspectives on, on the book Generations Deep. But before we get started with that, why don't you tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Mandy Koch. Um, I am an elementary educator in the St. Louis area, and I am married to a counselor. Uh, we have three kids that are almost 14, almost 11, and one that just turned seven. So it's a busy, active household. It is busy. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. And why don't we just start by touching on some of the key takeaways that you walked away with after reading Generation Steve? Sure, I think one of the, what I'd call a low level takeaway was just that, um, that getting curious part, the wondering why being able to detach a little bit emotionally from why certain things affect me the way they do, which also definitely triggered my curiosity about other people. What, what kinds of things trigger them and why? And that, that curiosity really got sparked for me. And just the recognition that everybody has a story and mm -hmm every individual we meet, we're only getting a snapshot of what their current present tense looks like. And just offering more grace to each other because we don't know. And sometimes we have the honor of getting to learn someone's story and then so much more about them will make so much more sense. And so I am humbled and honored by the friends I feel like uh, have shared their stories with me. And that's how I felt reading Gina's book, that there was a humility and an honor that she was willing to put it out there so vulnerable, vulnerably. And it reads like a friendship, like she is telling me personally her story. Yeah. The same one. Um, I, I found myself looking at individuals around me differently and just thinking they have theirs too and they have theirs too because I would stop to reflect in the middle of reading and I would mm -hmm. I would think that this is true for all of us and so you're right I I read that what you said just resonates with me mm -hmm. curiosity especially um so in terms of another key feature in generations as it pertains to breaking damaging generational cycles what resonated with you most and why I think what resonated with me is, I mean, first of all, just seeing patterns in my own family of origin that I suddenly recognize in myself and the sort of, oh my gosh, what am I passing on to my children? What do I, even at their younger ages, what can I already recognize and see um, that's happening? And um, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Almost an urgency of um, how do I, how do I break some of those? And so I think one of the key features from the book was you cannot do it by yourself. It, it just, it won't, it will not work. You have to, you're most likely gonna need a professional objective voice in there and also loving trusted voices of a community or a faith community. Um, and I don't think the book is only for Christians, but it ultimately leads there that if you can find your identity as in a in the Lord himself, then it leads towards healing. So I think that was one of the key features is that you can't go through a healing process alone. Yeah. Why do you think it's hard for us? here in the world. Um, can you repeat that? Sorry, there was a sound cut out a little bit. Oh yeah, I, I think that's so hard for us in the Western world to try and tackle life alone. Why, why do you think it's so hard to, to reach out to others? Uh, I think in some ways there, I mean, big picture, the American rugged individualism of we can pull ourselves up and get it done. And I think some of that has to do with family of origin. I think in my own family, there was a, a pretty solid message of we, do, we don't talk about our stuff to other people. Um, 
and I think a lot of it has to do with shame. We, we actually don't want people to know, here is some of the brokenness I come from, here's some of the brokenness I bring to the table. And especially when it's still a work in progress, I think a lot of people are happy and willing to share stories that have come to some general conclusion. I, here's what I went through and here's where I am now. But when we're going through it, we wanna do it alone. Yeah, I think that's what is so brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is vulnerable, but it was also um, it was helpful in terms of thinking through one's own and being willing to even even incrementally share with someone like you were talking. Mm -hmm. It's just a small piece just to test put your foot in the water it almost can give you a taste of, of what freedom can kind of look like as you yeah progress through your story so and i think brave was a word that came to my mind a lot reading the book yeah yeah, yeah. I, if 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 we all could just uh enter into that um mm -hmm. but you know the word courage doesn't come along without a little bit of fear attached to it right? otherwise yeah it's, so, yeah um so what does it mean to heal through faith and in relationship? And how is this concept important to you? Um, I know one of the things in Gina's book, reading her personal account, as the little girl, you just wanted to, I wanted to like look at her face and just be able to tell her, this is not your fault. Like these things that are happening are not your fault. And there were things in her story that triggered some things in my own. And I think one advantage I had was I had almost like a parenting team because I had a really large extended family in a very small town. And when I, again, look back over my own story and I see that there were some people involved that might've had a closer, had closer eyes on me than I thought they did. And I know my husband and I cannot raise our kids by ourselves. <laughs> we have accepted that and invite people in to help us. Um, but just but that healing, um, like I said before, it doesn't, it can't be done on your own and putting some trust in some people with also the knowledge they're going to fail. They're going to fail you sometimes. And in the same way, you're going to fail other people sometimes. And it just, it doesn't work outside of community. I think we so need those relationships that we feel safe um, to be ourselves in and, and that we make others feel safe with us too. So that in terms of, and in. Sorry, we had a sound cut out again. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that with faith mm -hmm. in life, in your in, in your life, and experience that specifically with faith is that was that the question? Okay. Um, I think some of that has to do with having that grounded identity in being a child of the one true King, and that took me. That's relatively recent in my life and I'm in my mid 40s and um and knowing it's never there's never a finished product there's never an arrival um there's so much repetition of uh, brokenness and healing and brokenness and healing in it I think there's a cycle to it and you, you get a you get a few steps ahead each time but having actually the belief that God is good, that he is working things for our good. And even in my small story, that the, even the struggles and the heartbreaking parts were working for good for me. And sometimes that's hard when big loss and devastation comes, but um, it's definitely there. Um, I know we had, before we had our third child, we had a miscarriage and it was so devastating because we didn't even think we wanted more children. And we felt like we were being obedient to a call in our lives from God himself to, to do the process again. And so then to have this miscarriage felt so, it was grief, but also anger. Like 
we were we were doing this. We thought we were um, obeying your voice. And through that, we received so much grace and love and support from our faith community. And I remember someone, I didn't even know terribly well, she came by with food and as she was leaving, she said, you know, just remember I love you. She was leaving and it just hit me. Why do we wait till these big events to tell each other we love them? And so I've become much more uh, reckless with who I will say I love you to. And it's not disingenuous, but it's um, just more frequent and, and following that nudge when I feel the need to say it because there are times someone may need to hear it and you don't know they need to hear it. Um, and in the other way, I think faith is important is that it speaks into those lies that just get lodged in our heads. And again, reading Gina's story, you got to see where were the major lies she was living under. And, and that happened to me through the miscarriage of just feeling the weight of the lies that were being repeated that I just, they felt so true. And it wasn't until a day where I let God take over and kind of melt this wall of grief I was in to hear the truth of what was going on. And, and then how that led us forward to, to our third child. And we ended up taking foster training and as parents and it just, and none of that would have happened without that experience. Wow. Um, That's such a in your life. Thank you for sharing your story and heartbreaking. I'm inspired by the the walking toward the risk of saying the what might be uncomfortable, but in the end, it actually is is what needs to be said in love. Oh, and the community thing, being married to a counselor and he's an extrovert. So he's an external processor. I am not, I am much more uh, likely to withdraw in hard moments. And he pushed hard to get me to talk about the miscarriage to other women. And I did not want to, and I so hate it when he's right, but I did. And it was the comfort that came from so many women sharing Yes, we went through that too. And there was this, how do I not know this? How do I not know? So many people I knew had gone through this at some point in their lives. And why, what is the shame that we live under for something like that, that we couldn't possibly control. And yet we're afraid to talk about it to each other. And so, yeah, again, I think that shame really bottles us up. It does. It does. That's the way I started the conversation, I think, you know, mm-hmm. willing to go there. It's, there's like this beautiful reward of connection that comes from it. Yeah. Um, so who would you recommend to read Generations Deep and why? I think almost any human could benefit from reading this book. Um, when you are looking for personal growth of why am I the way that I am? Why is my family the way that it is? Um, and, and not just discovering some of those things factually, but being able to take some steps forward towards the healing and breaking of those cycles. I think nearly anyone could benefit. Um, another group that came to mind is anyone who's been hurt by a church that seemed to accept people conditionally if that's, if there's a pain and a, an arrow in your story that uh, from Christian groups that you are only loved conditionally, I think this book would be really healing for. Um, but as an educator, I just found myself wanting to almost have Gina come in and do a workshop with my staff because yes, as educators, we go through some degree of trauma training. We would all claim we are trauma informed and, um, but it's still so tricky when those behaviors manifest in a classroom to understand why to be able to step in quickly to help a child kind of regulate emotionally where they are. But most of it is, most of that training is done on a surface level with the how-tos 
okay, this behavior is happening. So go with this tool to help. And, but I think when, if you don't understand um, some of the whys of a child's behavior, it makes it harder to really step in and make that child feel like they are still loved and accepted. We're going to, we're gonna help you through this and I love and accept you and here's what we're gonna do. Instead, they just feel like, well, I need you to stop this behavior. So here's what we're gonna do about that. And I recently saw a quote that said something like reframing, because educators will call things attention seeking behaviors and to reframe that as connection seeking behaviors. I like that. And that just went straight through my heart. It made me think of Gina's book of how many things, how many of her choices were trying to grasp at connection and how much we all do that as human beings. We're, we're constantly looking for it. We're looking for the, where is my value? Where am I connected? Who am I connected to? And so children who have no concept of how to go after connection, especially if it's never been modeled for them and they haven't experienced much connection of how do we help them connect in the moment, not just I am negatively reinforcing this behavior or, but how can I connect to you right now? What do you need from me? Um, plus a whole new level of grace for some of their parents because that, Gina phrased it pervasive chaos. And so some of our students are living in pervasive chaos, but when you sit down with a parent, 99% of the time, they really are doing the best they can with what they've got. And so for some of them and their stories, it's what they're doing is the best they've got right now. So just as educators, I think it would give us a whole new level of grace and understanding for our students and their families to look for those points of connection. Oh, that is a really very rich words. And the connection that you're talking about, I can understand from, from your perspective as who's, who's trying to connect dots with so many youth all at the same time, mm -hmm. um, just to be able to take a step back, back to that word of curiosity that you started this conversation with and seek to connect. Um, wow, it's really good. Um, well, Especially, I think, because I'm a music teacher. So I see all 600 students in the building and I see them year after year. And so I get to see changes sometimes in the way the classroom teachers don't. And so it's, it's an interesting process to witness how they grow and develop and... Yeah, and you get to connect in art as well. That's a whole yeah. level of connection in many cases. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's beautiful. That's, that's, well, I'm glad I get to connect with you today. Um, it's <laughs> been you. a really, really enlightening and um, helpful dialogue. And I, I really appreciate your perspective on what, mm -hmm. what you write about in Generation Steve. So thanks. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much.